Hello, welcome to uh, the weekly Come Follow Me video. We are going to be discussing the first six chapters of the Book of Moroni, the final and last book in the Book of Mormon. Now, I hear, as you can see, I'm in a, a chapel here, at least the, the background behind me is the, a chapel. I want you to think about who taught you about the basic ordinances and principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For example, uh, we have the sacrament over here. Who was it that showed you how to uh, partake of the sacrament? I'm not talking just take the water and the bread, but really what it means and how to do that. I'm going to show you uh, just a, a little thought, maybe a little theory behind this week's readings. So if you'll first of all go to Moroni chapter 1. Again, just a little historical context to help you out with this. If you'll go to uh, the first chapter of Moroni, again, it's short, it's only four verses. Uh, I'm going to read verse 4. Wherefore I, this is Moroni, I write a few more things contrary to that which I had supposed. In other words, remember the last few weeks, it seems like every week Moroni says, you know, I wasn't going to write anything else, but I'm going to add this, I'm going to add this. So here he is yet another time adding something. For I had supposed not to have written any more, but I write a few more things that perhaps they may be of worth unto my brethren, the Lamanites, in some future day, according to the will of the Lord. Now Moroni thinks this is for uh, the Lamanites in the future, and, and I'm not doubting that because I believe it is. However, who is going to be the very next person to read these plates? Think about it. Moroni is writing on them. He knows he's going to bury them in the ground at least another time, if they haven't been multiple times. It's going to be Joseph Smith. Who taught Joseph Smith the basic ordinances of the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's Moroni. So Moroni is feeling inspired to write a few things for his Lamanite brethren in some future day. Whether he knew then or didn't know then that the next person to write them, uh, to read them, would be Joseph Smith. So here's my little theory. I really believe that the Book of Moroni is the priesthood training manual, the handbook of instructions, you can say, for Joseph Smith. Because there's nobody to show Joseph how to do this. So let's see what's in this handbook. Go to chapter 2. The words of Christ, which he spake unto his disciples, the twelve. Okay, here is Moroni writing down some words that haven't been written in the gold, on the gold plates yet, that Jesus said to his twelve apostles. And again, it's short. Two, more, two verses after the verse introductory verse, right? And he, this is Jesus, called them, the twelve apostles that he called here in America, by name, saying... Ye shall call on the Father in my name, in mighty prayer. And after ye have done this, ye shall have power that to him whom, upon whom ye shall lay your hands, ye shall give the Holy Ghost. And in my name shall ye give it, for thus do mine apostles. And then there's the laying on of hands. Again, this is the Savior training his apostles how to lay hands upon people to give them the Holy Ghost. So why is Moroni writing that? He's training the next generation of priesthood leaders, in this case, Joseph Smith and others who read it, how to do that. So what's Joseph Smith going to do when he restores the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church of Jesus Christ in the latter days? He's going to baptize people and lay his hands upon them and give them the Holy Ghost. Let's go to chapter 3. What's chapter 3 all about? How to ordain other priesthood leaders. Now, we know that Joseph is going to be ordained an apostle, which gives him the keys and the authority of all the priesthood offices. That was by Peter, James, and John. So here, Moroni is training Joseph Smith and others. Again, Oliver Cowdery is translating this, and Martin Harris and others will read this early on. So, verse 1, the manner which the disciples who were called the elders of the church, ordained priests and teachers. So how do you, again, 
ordain another priest or, or a teacher. Here's the instructions. Verse 2, you lay their hands upon them. And then you say, verse 3 is the words of the ordination. I ordain you. And that's the word that they use, ordain. Again, so we confer priesthood. We ordain priesthood offices. And we set apart callings. And that pattern has been set at, since the beginning. And it's been passed on ever since. So we confer priesthood. We ordain priesthood offices. And we set apart callings. So if you've ever been set apart, man or woman, it's to a calling. Men have, first of all, must be conferred at the priesthood. Aaronic, first. Melchizedek, next. And then we are ordained to the various offices within the priesthood. Love that. So let's go to chapter 4. Now, once you are an elder or a priest, what do you do next? Well, you administer the sacrament. Notice it says right in here how to do that. And if you have ever had the privilege of uh, having the sacrament in your home, which I think now many of us, if not most of us have, here's the instructions. Moron on chapter 4, verse 2. And they did kneel down with the church and pray in the Father in the name of Christ, saying, and verse 3 is the prayer on the blessing of the bread. And then chapter 5 is the blessing on the wine. Now again, we do not use uh, wine anymore. We use water. You can get all of that great stories in the Doctrine and Covenants and so forth, but we'll get to there when we get to, that, to there. Uh, now, you'll notice Today, when our priests bless the sacrament, they do not use the Moroni account. They use the Doctrine and Covenants section 20, verses 77 and 79. If you compare the two prayers, bread and the water, there's only one word difference. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to make you look it up. And it's not water to wine because both Doctrine and Covenants and Moroni say wine. So we've actually made two changes in the uh, Book of Mormon account. But compared to the Book of Mormon to the to the Doctrine and Covenants, there's only one word difference. But we use the Doctrine and Covenants account. It's so minor that you'll think it's ridiculous, but it's but it's interesting nonetheless. So there's the priesthood ordinances. So how to give the gift of the Holy Ghost, how to ordain teachers and priests, how to bless this the uh, the sacrament. And then we end with chapter 6. If you'll just look at chapter 6 for a moment, verse 1. And now I speak concerning baptism. Behold, elders, priests, and teachers were baptized. And they were not baptized, save forth they brought forth fruit, meat, that they were worthy of it. Neither did they receive unto any unto baptism, save they came forth with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and witnessed unto the church that they truly repented of their sins. This week, is, it's a great study uh, to have of ordinances of the gospel, but also what it means to be baptized, the baptismal covenant. Do a little cross-referencing and searching of what it means to be baptized. Moroni 6, verse 3, None were received unto baptism, save they took upon them the name of Christ, having a determination to serve him to the end. And then notice what happened in verse 4. They were cleansed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Again, if you ever want to have that cleansing power in your life where you feel clean, it's through the gift and power of the Holy Ghost. And then what was happened? After that, uh, their names were taken that they might be numbered and nourished by the good word. Verse 5, And the church did meet together oft to fast and to pray. Now, some say, well, sometimes there's circumstances we can't gather. With modern technology today, we can gather. Young men's groups, young women's groups, relief societies, elders' quorums. There's, we can all gather in classes to have discussions. We can strengthen together uh, each other. We can do all the things that we did before. Now, there's some nice parts about gathering in person. I love that, too. Uh, maybe there's a nice variety in there. Verse 8, this is Moroni 6, verse 8. As oft as they repented and sought forgiveness with real intent, they were forgiven. Now that phrase, real intent, is used several times in the scriptures. 
It's worth studying. In Moroni chapter 10, Moroni uses it again, where he says in verses 3 through 5, those famous missionary scriptures, right? If you want to know, you have to pray and ask with real intent. What are your intentions? If intentions are not real, if they're not genuine, uh, we don't receive the answer. And in this case, you won't be forgiven. So there's Moroni chapters uh, 1 through 6. Next week, we look at the next several chapters of Moroni. And I hope you have a great week studying.